Welcome to Statics. Zero Force Members Some trust members may be Zero Force Members. Zero Force Members, as the name implies, support no load. In other words, the force in the member is zero. When analyzing a trust, recognizing Zero Force Members may save you some time. So, if the members take no load, why are they there? These extra members are used for stability against member buckling or to ease construction. They may also be present if the load on the truss changes. They may be zero force members under one loading condition, but take load under another loading condition. Let's discuss some procedures and rules for identifying zero force members. Here's a truss composed of 13 members. It is supported with a pin supported A and a roller support at B. A single vertical force acts at point G. Here's a free body diagram of the truss with the supports replaced with reaction forces. There are several zero force members in this truss. Let's identify them. Let's look first at joint H. Here is a free body diagram of joint H. There are only two forces acting on the joint from members FH and GH. There are no applied loads or support reactions. If I were to sum forces to zero in the y direction, there would be no contribution from force GH. Therefore, I would find that force FH is zero. Now, summing forces in the x direction with force FH zero, I would find that force GH must also be zero. There is a rule for this condition. This rule is for joints made by two members only. If only two members form a truss joint, and they are not collinear, or oriented along the same line, and no applied load or support reaction acts on the joint, then both members are zero force members. For example, in the truss shown, this joint meets the conditions, so these two members are zero force members. Also, this joint meets the conditions, so these two members are zero force members. Therefore, we can envision the truss in this simplified condition for analysis. So, for joint H, its two members are not collinear, and there are no applied loads or reaction forces acting on it. Therefore, members FH and GH are zero force members. Note that if we move the applied load to joint H, that would no longer be true. So I remove the two members from my truss. Let's next look at joint D. Here is a free body diagram of joint D. Joint D connects three members. Two of them, BD and DG, are collinear. There are no applied loads or reaction forces acting on it. If I were to sum forces to zero in the y direction, I would find that force CD is zero. Summing forces in the x direction, I would find that force BD is equal to collinear force DG. There is a rule for this condition. The rule applies to joints made by three members only. If three members form a truss joint and two members are collinear and no applied load or support reactions act on the joint, the third member is a zero force member. So for joint D, BD and DG are collinear. There are no applied loads or reaction forces. So, member CD meets the three-member joint conditions for a zero-force member. So, I remove the member from my truss. Now, let's look at what remains. Joint E is a three-member joint. Two of the members are collinear, and there are no applied or reaction forces. Therefore, member EF is a zero-force member. I remove member EF from my truss. Now, let's look at joint F. With the other zero force members removed, it is now a two-member joint. Since the remaining members, CF and FG, are not collinear, and there are no applied or reaction forces, both members are zero force members. I remove them from my truss, and now I am down to essentially five members left to analyze. Let's look at another special condition that results in zero force members. Here is a similar truss consisting of five members. 
It is supported by a pin support at A and a roller support at B. There is a single applied force. Here is a free body diagram of the truss. If we look at joint C, it meets the three member joint conditions. So member BC is a zero force member. I remove it from my truss. Let's take a look at joint B. Here is its free body diagram. There is a support reaction force and two member forces. If I sum forces to zero in the y direction, I will find that force AB is zero. So member AB is a zero force member. What we have here is a special case of the three member joint condition. Because the support reaction force is collinear with member BD, the other member is a zero force member. I remove it from my truss. Looking at what is left, you see that if we attempted to build the truss like this, with a roller support at B, and considering the influence of gravity, the truss would be unstable. So even though member AB is a zero force member, it is necessary in the real truss.